obviously rosters are different. But. Oh, no. I mean, I think there's a lot you can take. Um, you know, uh, tell you what now, playing against uh, Jameis Winston was always a challenge. Um, and, uh, you know, we know we knew we had our hands full. And you had to go about, you know, your business in different ways. You know, I just was talking about it. You know, I think Coach Fisher does an unbelievable job uh, getting those guys to throw the ball to the right guy based on what coverage you're in and, uh, you know, based on what the quarterback's getting. So you're not going to fool them. Uh, you know, then it comes down to your techniques and fundamentals and, and your philosophy of how you go about doing your business. Uh, obviously, you know, Dalvin Cook has just, you know, made it a very difficult challenge uh, and trying to have that balancing act uh, between how you're going to go about stopping the run game and, uh, and then being solid in the throw game as well. And then, you know, I'm one of those guys, I'm not afraid to pressure anybody. Uh, I mean, it's just the way I am. So, you know, but you gotta do it, you gotta be smart about how you go about doing it. And, you know, you, you, you know, so all those things go into making up a game plan. But let me tell you something, every time Ford has his hands on the ball, I can't breathe. I'm 61 years old and I just, <gasps> And then we get him on the ground, and you move on to the next play, and you stop breathing again. But um, he's a very, very good player. Um, uh, I would say he's, uh, if he's not the best, he's one of the top three players that we'll, we've played uh, against, will have played against all year. Um, and I have great respect for his toughness as well. Uh, I think Francois is a really good quarterback. Uh, can make all the throws. I mentioned the coach does a great job of getting him to throw the ball to the right guys. Obviously, he's got tremendous skill around him. I like the tight end, 81. I'm not great with names. I know he's from Jersey. So uh, I, I think he does a nice job of fitting in the run game and fitting in the pass protections and getting out. Uh, he not, doesn't have an overabundance of catches, but the ones he seems to put his hands on are important. Um, but that's not an issue because they have enough guys they can throw the ball to that are interchangeable. Um, but I like our guys, you know, and we have a style that we play. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and the whole whole key for us is, uh, you know, there's no been on the film for 12 weeks now. I mean, there's going to be no easy throws. You know, every throw you make, you're going to have to earn it because we're going to play the game right here with those guys. And, uh, you know, don't think we're some slow Midwest team, you know, that's coming in here to play now. Uh, our guys can play. We, we'll play with tremendous technique and fundamentals. Um, uh, you know, our, our front four is, uh, you know, playing at a high level. And our linebackers led by, you know, Jabril Peppers and Ben Gideon and Mike McCray, you know, we're, we've been able to piece that together so that those guys complement the front and back end. So, you know, uh, our guys have been in the soup a little bit and know, and, and know how to play. It sounds like you guys have been unloading a lot of information on the players ever since you guys started doing practices and you kind of have to piece it up. Um, how has that been for the players and how have they been handling that? Um, you, you know, we do that in preseason. You know, the way coach runs things, I mean, it's all about the football. So, our guys get a lot of football from the preseason period, the spring period. I mean, the amount of repetition uh, that we give our guys and the amount of, you know, con uh, concept that we present to our guys. And, and Coach will say it all the time, more is more. So, when you have more, you know, you have answers, so you're just trying to, you know, give your guys as the opportunity that somewhere along in the game we got to make an adjustment. We've got answers, and you, it's not like, well, I guess we're done. 
you know, we have enough answers. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, but our guys adjust really well to that, you know. Uh, so I'm not even sure that it's, you know, that it's an that it's an issue. But we do take that approach. There's no question about it. Coach, you see, you're not afraid of pressure at any time. How does it help to have peppers who you can either retreat back into coverage or send them? You talk about his versatility a little bit. It's critical. You know that position played by, in my opinion, the best player in college football. You know, we can have that discussion all day. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's huge because I, I can put him in the rush. You know, I can put him on, you know, substitute him to be on any guy that I want him on. Or he can be, you know, part of the, the coverage equation that we employ. You know, when we have, you know, four or five concepts where he's aligned on different guys. So, um, it's huge. You know, it's it's... And it, the nice part about it is you don't have to substitute to get it done. You just kind of make the call, and then all of a sudden he's over there or he's over there, or, you know. So that's the flexibility that he gives you is uh, the ability to kind of play multiple positions. But he, but he's not leaving the field, so it's not like the offense, offense can say, oh, they just sub Peppers and they sub this guy, so this means he'll be here. I mean, we do a lot of different stuff with them. And, uh, you know, as I alluded to, sometimes it's criminal because there's a lot of concept this guy has to learn, and uh, he just uh, he just handles it with ease. I wanted to ask you also um, about the three kids from Flanagan that you got, uh, how they're coming along the field. Unbelievable. Really happy. <coughs> Devin Bush has been a, you know, a solid number two guy from the day he virtually got on campus. You know, I kind of threw him in there. Um, Unfortunately for him, he's playing behind Mike McCray, and Mike's played all year, uh, with the exception of maybe 20, 25 snaps of which Devin's played. Um, but he's in a position where, you know, this spring he'll be he'll be in a starting role, and he's off and running. Uh, Devin Gill, uh, you know, uh, I think we've kind of found out who he is. And, you know, he'll have a chance to be in that two deep as well, moving forward this uh, spring. And uh, this Josh Metellus now, we're really excited about him because he can play safety and he can kind of do, he can kind of be the poor man's Jabril Peppers too. Uh, we got to get him a little bigger maybe, but he can do a lot of the things that we asked Jabril to do. <laughs> like I said, I'm not saying he's Jabril Peppers. I'm just saying he's the poor man's Jabril Peppers. So, uh, you know, uh, but we're excited about him. I, I think he could play either safety position, really an intelligent, uh, understands concept guy. And uh, I just think that, you know, just the three, we just threw three guys arbitrarily from Flanagan, right? The nice thing is the, the, the guys that are older than him, have kind of helped those guys. It, that's just kind of the way it goes at Michigan. And I, you know, you don't know how that's going to go. I'm just a new guy coming in, and I'm fighting for my life trying to install something. But our our our, our older guys do a great job of of you know being role models for our guys both on and off the field. If Jabril leaves, who would be that? Who would, who would be in that spot next year? It's a good question. I mean, do you, do you I'm not there yet. I mean, Noel, we, we were told at the beginning of the year Noel was kind of that guy, but I mean, I don't know. It's well, it, it, here's, what, here's what would happen. If the game's played today, Jabril's playing. Right. If we get into those big personnel groups, I can insert Noel. Uh, if we were to go, you know, and Jabril got hurt, uh, then... Josh Metellus would okay. eat up some of those plays. Now, we're also fooling around with this guy, you know, the Glasgow family. Yeah. This Jordan Glasgow, I think we found this guy at home. Oh, really? That, that's fine. I think we have. You know, we've kind of fooled with him in it. So, you know, we're kind of, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to be different at the safety position. So, I don't know if I want to take Josh and pull him out of there full time and, and turn him into the Viper. 
But boy, wouldn't it be wonderful if this guy just continues to mature? Uh, because he he kind of he's a different guy, but he kind of has those qualities. But you know, the beauty is we still have Noah, uh, who can really and, and really has practiced extremely well uh, over the last six seven weeks, um, and will have that viper guy that can help him out. That's that's just how it's going to be based on you know, the spread offenses and so forth and what people are going to try to do to us, we've got to be able to counteract that. You mentioned Jordan. I know you didn't coach, you weren't around Graham, but that group, the Glasgow group. Yeah, yeah but I got this guy, Greg Madison, who tells me a little bit about mm -hmm. history with this family. Uh, and I've watched Ryan. And, and obviously, <laughs> the nice thing with Jordan is he's gotten on special teams. And he's done a really, really, really good job. Usually that's an indicator that a guy's arrow is moving up. He's not afraid of the big picture. And uh, that's what we're seeing in the bowl practice. If you said to me, who's the guy that surprised you? Surprised you the most? Yeah. What about this? I mean, is there something that, that runs through that family? Oh, I, I don't know. You, got, you know, I know one thing. They, they got the one two thing going, so I don't want to fight them. <laughs> hey, I'll do it. I, hey, side. just do it. <laughs> Let's do it. But uh, you know, we, you know, some guys, you know, you you got them in a position, you know, and this is where I have a problem with defense. I've been doing it a long time, and I don't know. So a guy doesn't fit, and he can't do everything well. So you just throw him in there. And, and try to fit them in, you know, take a square peg and fit them into a round hole. And well, you really can't do that well, but that's we'll just have to live with it. No, 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 no. Take the dude out, okay? Let him focus on the things he can do well. And uh, all of a sudden, we get just kind of fooled with him in the bowl practices. And I'm going, damn, this guy's doing things a lot better. He just has a way, you know, he can rush it a little bit. So I'm sure he's got a little of that going. He can cover a little bit. Uh, you know, he's a tough guy. You know, he, he set the edge on a counter play yesterday. I was kind of like, damn, uh, this guy's playing pretty good. So, you know, if you keep fooling around with the soup uh, and you find things that certain guys can do well, just let them do that. And take them out when they got to do the other things. And, uh, you know, everybody goes, oh, you're a big package guy. No, I'm not. If a guy can't do something well, get him the heck out of there and let somebody else go in there and do it well. That's really how packages develop is let guys do things they can do well. And, and we're finding this guy can do some of those things that the Viper position has pretty darn well. You're losing so many using these bowl practices between preparing for Friday and kind of grooming that next generation and experimenting. It's a great question. Uh, nothing's more important than the game. So, you know, in terms of the concept, the scheme, and all that, you're kind of doing everything to get ready for the game. Uh, but during that process, you're kind of teaching a lot of guys the game plan, and we're trying to give you know equal reps to the first and second units. Um, and like some guys, for example, may not be in on all the second unit reps, just like we were just talking about, but they're in on some of them, and they have a job, so they let their jobs dictate when they're in the game. So between all that, you you, you know you kind of throw it all in the soup bowl, and 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 guys are practicing to learn a game plan. Guys are getting reps, <laughs> but nothing's more important than the game plan. So and and the game on Friday. So you know it's a balancing act, but I think that's what we get paid to do is make sure you you know you're getting ready to do all three things because it's a that's what coaching is. You know it's a you're multitasking all the time, you know, eye on the game, but you got to have an eye to the future as well because uh, 
you're going to wake up on uh, Saturday morning, and uh, guess what? It's next season. So you you got you got to be ready to go. Yeah. The younger guys on this team don't seem at all intimidated about that prospect about losing personnel. Uh, Devin Bush was talking about you know kind of the attitude they have to, to keep the success going. Yeah, I don't think these. Again, it all comes down to this is an unbelievable group of seniors. That's all I'm going to say. You know. Here's some clown from the East Coast coming to the Midwest. And, uh, you know, hey, this is how we do it. This is what we're going to do. Here's all your checks. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to have overhangs. But, you know, this is how we're going to defend. The... I mean, there was never, like, get back, you know, from the players. They just, ah, let's go. You know, now maybe that's part of their D coordinator in three years. But I also think it's character, maturity, and when young guys can just watch that operation and say, they kind of trust them. Uh, for whatever worse, you know, and like, you told, like I tell them, hey, I'm all you got now. <laughs> so you really don't have much choice. But, uh, you know, there really has never been that. Um, it's unbelievable, you know, you, you know especially here you are, you know, and I'm out there yesterday, and I'm looking, and I'm going, Ooh, that guy's going to be gone, that guy's going to be gone. And I'm not, like, looking at it like, oh, what's going to happen to us? Woe is me. It's just, like, it takes a little bit out of you because, you know, boy, what an opportunity you've had to coach some really unbelievable human. That guy right there? We'd be without that guy? I, don't, I have no idea. I mean, that guy wouldn't say boo during spring practice if you asked him to. And now, you know, makes all the checks, everybody's looking at him, bah, 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 bah. you know, he's got it all down. And, uh, you know, if he's one of those guys now, I go to the board or I make a comment, and if he's giving me the, whoa, what's up here that's not right? Because he, he, he kind of knows what we're doing now. 